This is Cat Wee on my front door. And this is the cat that's been doing it for months. Meow. And he's back once again. But this time, I'm ready for him. Sniff, sniff. So, I've had a bit of a problem with neighbourhood cats in the past. If you haven't seen my previous videos, I got sick of hosing urine off everything and went about improvising my own humane cat repellent to tackle the problem. First I improvised a motion activated water spray with random parts from around the house and my car, which worked reasonably well. We had a number of cats like the stealthy Blackie McLaser eyes. We put the system through its paces with a couple of visits and then also other regular visitors like Tabby Green Collar and Fatty Fatty 2x4 who both permanently morphed into levitating caterpillars. But once the repellent was packed up, the cats kept coming back. To step up the fear element to hopefully provide something a bit more memorable for the cats, I set it up again, this time adding some extra acoustic and visual aspects to the mix. And we got a bit of a party vibe going. It seemed to work well because cats hate parties. However, the cleanup in the morning was a new inconvenience and the four hour setup time, and the thundering sounds in the middle of the night, which sometimes are just false activations. Fast forward a few years and the cats are back and they are more bounceable than ever, pissing on everything almost nightly. Our latest batch are not kept indoors or in a secure enclosure by their owners. However, none of my immediate neighbors own cats, so I figure they must travel pretty far. My current theory is we actually live on a secret cat superhighway. And I still try alternative deterrents like bleach to try and mask their piss smell. But seriously, me closing up for night is pretty much on par with Will Smith in I Am Legend. But now there's a new concern and it's life or death. There's a family that needs our help. Two native New Holland honey eaters have decided to set up a home and raise a family in a nest that's been built way too close to ground level on the cat highway. So I'm concerned they're gonna get killed by the cats because it's happened in the past. Us humans introduced cats here in the first place, so I'm gonna take some responsibility and help defend the nest while also hopefully reducing my ongoing cat problem. So the solution, we are going back to basics. A motion activated water spray setup I'm going with this option because it'll be operational every night and self-resetting in case of multiple cats. But this time I've come up with a crazy simple design so anyone could make their own at home with about $15 in parts in as little as 45 minutes. If you've missed it, my recently uploaded video shows you how to make your own like this in its easiest form. But to defend the backyard, I'll be using this slightly fancier version of that build because it's more durable and can run on batteries and stuff and it looks way cooler. Links for both versions will be in the description. We are ready to put this spray to work defending the backyard. To capture the results of this cat shield, this time around we're running four HD infrared security cameras, which are rolling 24 seven. And then our water spray will be triggering a bunch of other stuff to trigger some lights and a digital SLR firing some nice crisp stills. Look at that, just like old times. I have set up the sprayer in the main cat thoroughfare and as usual I've left the gate open. The main reason for this is the cats jump over the fence anyway and they use the car as a launch and landing pad so it's put a fair few scratches in the paint. We are ready to go. I had been checking in on the eggs for the last few days but before I had a chance to get any footage the birds have hatched within the last 24 hours or so. I've named them Drogon and Ragel. Their bodies are about the size of a marble at the moment, you can get perspective against this pen. But they look like they're doing well. Help. They've been passing the time playing a game of why the hell is my head stuck to the floor, ah crap it's gravity, this sucks. The sun is setting, the mum is back from getting some formula at the chemist, and she's sitting on the nest to provide some warmth and protection. However, the night is dark and full of f***ing tabbies. It's just after 11pm and we have our first visitor who I've named Undersniffer. He hasn't noticed the bird's nest but he has noticed the plastic panel I put there so he must be a regular visitor. He gives it a sniff to see if it's safe. Now let's sniff under it to see if there's any difference at the top. Nope, all good smell consistency here. Let's check the other end. 
But no, it's definitely not safe. It smells exactly like that one time his owners tried to give him a bath, which he responded to at the time with a very clear and polite F no. Unfortunately, I had some issues with the stills camera taking the photos, which didn't fire this time. But let's check out our video replay. The trajectory of the water has landed right on under Sniffer's head. He has chucked it into reverse gear, and then with the acceleration of a thousand cat power, he is out of there, kicking up a dirt bike style rooster tail of sand. Off to wherever he lives to grab himself a towel and write in his cat diary. Dear diary, having a bath is f***ed. We've made it to morning without any additional cat visits. The birds have survived the night. They are enjoying a sleep in, while mum and dad try to think of a way to use the microwave and coffee machine without it waking them up. <coughs> it's now night number two. The cameras are reset and working. It's just gone 1.30am and there's a bit of activity near the cars. I can't believe it, but Under Sniffer has returned. He either completely forgot about his visit last night, or he thinks he can slip under the radar by going through the front yard to complete his sniffing mission. He pauses at the wheel and takes a pre-sniff p***. He then makes his way towards the gate. He has a quick muffler back rub, and then he's paused at the gate. He knows he's forgetting something. A bit more of a sniff might trigger that memory recall. Now what was this place again? Can't really remember, just have a bit of a sniff there. Ah, oh, that smells like my face juice. Yeah, definitely face juice. Yeah, sniff, sniff that thing, smell that. Yeah, it smells like face juice, big hard sniff. Yeah, definitely my face juice on there. Oh, what? oh that's that plastic panel. I remember that, man, that was some good sniffing. Yeah, anyway, oh, f Sprayed again, and he's out of there. Checking out our photo replay, it's given him a great dousing across his back. He's sunk in his claws, accelerated, and then transitioned into more of a rectangle shape. Kind of looks like he's swallowed a cardboard box or something. He's then running home to download some brain training apps to try and get that memory recall to at least reach goldfish level. A few hours have passed, the birds are still safe in their nest, and I don't believe it, but one of our original cast has dropped in for a visit. It's Tabby Toilet Rug. But hang on. Right there, for the non-believers, that is a cat taking a pee on a car. And for those who just like to argue about the terminology, you can call it territorial marking. It's the same hole, it stinks foul, it's on my car, so I don't really care about the cat's biological purpose for doing it. Anyway, Tabby Toilet Rug is off towards the gate. You know, just taking the most logical path. Oh no, he's just helping me out with a bit of an under-vehicle inspection. He checks the rear diff for any leaks. Has a bit of a look for any underbody rust that I might not be aware of. Checks the tire tread wear. All good here. Okay, that's a night's work done. He's worked up a bit of an appetite, and he's keen to munch on the soft bones of some newborn birds. So off to the supermarket. Hmm, okay, hatchlings, hatchlings, which aisle? Is that it? No, that's cucumbers, don't want to go down there. They've got to be here somewhere. But now he's just kind of being rude, holding up the queue for other cats. Okay, he's on the move. And it's a spray to the face! That is unfortunate! We on my car and I we on you. Well, kind of, because that would be weird in reality. But looking at our photos, he's taking a moment to take a good old gaze in the direction of his imminent soaking while pre-deploying his claws. And then it's business time. His tail swells and he's heading home to resume his position on the toilet floor. A few nights have now passed and all is quiet on the cat front. Maybe the cat deterrent is working. I'm pretty happy because I don't have to disinfect car tyres of cat pee each morning. Drogon and Ragel are now five days old and have just started to open their eyes. <coughs> they're even happier because, you know, they're not dead. Also because they're getting a few extra feathers and finding themselves looking less like shriveled manberries. They've just been enjoying the quiet safe nights and then lounging around in the day, waiting for mum and dad to give them a spew feed. 
But there's still a long road ahead with many feline filled nights to come. Night falls. You can tell because it's getting dark. Drogon and Ragel are all tucked into bed and the cat spray standing by to defend the yard. There are a few unintentional obstacles on the field, which are materials in storage for the construction of my anti-feline fortress. <coughs> it's just before midnight and we have our first visitor. It's another of our original cast. It's Ranga Peabucket. Look at him. He just struts in like he owns the place. <coughs> Heading straight for the open gate. And he's gone straight into the spray. But from there, I have to take you straight to the photos. The first frame we can see the water is well on its way to cooling off his fiery orange fur. He's popped in a fairly useless half power jump, but it's only taken him further into the motion activated spray stream for a full length wedding. And now you should probably pause the video and put your guess in the comments. Does Mr. P Bucket A turn and run back in the direction he came from, B run through the open gate, or C do some kind of stupid up cat thing that humans wouldn't think of. Let's take a look at our next frame. He's checking out the gate latch. What's he gonna do? He's gone full scratching post on it, despite being well aware that there's an opening in the fence that he was already walking towards. But it gets worse. He's gone full inception style on the fence. He's got a firm claw up in position and he's gonna jump over. No, what's he doing? He's going for the other edge of the gate now. Ah, oh, no, it's just a bit of a chimney climb, and he's over the top. And with a crazy cat blast off, he is off, almost blowing the gate off its hinges. Now, going back to our video replay, after the initial hosing, it's takeoff time. Then, once he clears the top and launches, he comes in for what must be one of the best superhero landings I've ever seen. He then hits full thrust on the cat engines, and he's out of there. And Cat Jet Blast. Drogon and Ragel have survived another night. <coughs> However, they're still... They're still... <coughs> However, they're still very confined to the nest and dependent on their parents, so it's far from over yet. There's more to come. Check out my video on how to build your own simple animal repellent sprinkler, and I've also done up an ebook on how to make the fancier version like I've used in this video. Links below. Also, I'm giving away some of my working prototypes I use for photographing the ebook. If you want one, make sure you're subscribed and leave a comment, perhaps saying how you could use it. And yes, thank you to everyone in my last video who took me quite literally and posted comments saying, anything really. I don't know why I didn't see that one coming. Kristen had a great laugh about it. Uh, you're all in the draw too though, so it's all good. Remember, if cats aren't a native species where you live, keep them indoors or in an outdoor enclosure at all times. Plus, keep in mind a wet cat that goes home for the night is then not gonna be out killing native wildlife and breeding and putting themselves at risk of feline diseases or even just encountering other fed up neighbors who might not take such a nice approach as water. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and share this video with your friends or the baby birds may not survive. Nah, I'm sure they'll be fine. I'm Craig Turner, my YouTube channel is Turner81 and I'll be back with the next installment very soon. Make sure you click the bell so you get a notification and you know, otherwise YouTube will kind of hide the results from you because this is how they kind of work now. Yeah, see you soon.